<laughs> Duran, you do this every week. <laughs> Every goddamn week. You know I hate it. Oh, I need to clean my glasses. I'm still here. Oh, Lord, have every mercy that can fit on my soul. Do you hear they play my song? Better hurry up and get in for the travel song. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I can get in there and dance with you. Oh, but I can't if I'm sitting in my I'm on some outside life. Over on my soul. Why does the breeze have to be so cold? I just want to know. On what? Okay, Durant, you know, I know we give you like a whole four minutes and 50 seconds to do your thing every Thursday night, but we got a lot to talk about. It's been two weeks. Y'all know the song. Shit. <laughs> what up, dog? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Library Live. It's your boy, Darrell Antonio Tremaine. It's been two weeks. It's been two motherfucking weeks. Two weeks and... First of all, just a second. If I go this way... I don't know. Is it that way that I wanted to go? No. That's definitely not right. There we go. A little better. I need to be in the center. That's not even in the center, but I'm a, it'll do for now. Anywho, um, it's been two long weeks, baby. We are back. I Let me just briefly tell y'all about last week. Last, I was in Chicago for you guys who, oh shit. We not even on the homepage or on the damn show page. Um, let me just tell y'all about Chicago last week. So, first of all, listen, for you guys who know me know, I have become somewhat of a loner as I've gotten older and, you know, matured and things of that nature. I like to travel alone. I'm totally fine with traveling by myself. You know, it's fun for me because I don't have to run by nobody's agenda but mine. But for Chicago, I went to Chicago with my my sister cousin. You know how black people do. You know your cousin. That's your real good cousin that you consider your sister or brother. Um, her and her daughter, who's eight. The one I tell y'all about it all the time. The one that was in the car with us that I had to take to school when I was playing daddy daycare. Her. She's eight. Um, we drove. Mistake number one. That was six hours in a car with an eight-year-old. That was mistake number one. However, Thursday, the first day we were there, I had a really good time. We got to walk around. We got to, we were right there in downtown Chicago. We stayed at the A-Loft. It was really nice too. Um, we walked around, we walked to the pier. We had good food. I was drunk by six o'clock and I had a good time. Then that night I took a disco nap cause you know I need a good disco nap. So I took me a disco nap, woke up. It was like 10 or 11, 
got dressed, got in a shower, went, it was like a pub, maybe like a block down from the apartment, sashay right on down there, may or may not have finagled with some people, that's my business, but I had me a nice time on Thursday. Friday morning rolled around and I guess my sister cousin girl was over it and I pick up on over it vibes. So when I picked up on her over it vibes, I was like, you know what? Let's go get our shit. We about to go because I'm not going to have this kind of energy all day for the rest of the day. So let's go get your shit and we about to go. So we came back home on Friday at like we got home at like five or six because girl was a mess. But I will be going back to Chicago soon. I don't know when, because I would like to explore more. That's neither here nor there. Yes, we went with the yellow. It was a unanimous decision. Well, at least here on Facebook. Instagram was split 50-50 with the yellow or the uh, the white one. I love them both. Y'all, get into our good juice after everything and then some. I had to get my shirts because, you know, we got our, our government money. So I was like, woo, first thing I'm doing is getting my, uh, my everything and then some shirts. Not paying bills. Not being a responsible adult, but I'm getting my everything and then some podcast shirts. So, facts are facts. I think these come in, does this one come in different colors? I don't know. But yellow's my favorite color, so I got a yellow one. And then our Go Be Great is the one that I can't wait to wear. Because it's like, you know, like a neon rainbow situation. Everything. Uh, Jabari over there wearing it. But that's neither here nor there. So, that was Chicago. That's why I wasn't here last week. But I'm back this week. And... We got an unboxing to do, and then we're going to get into the mess. Matter of fact, let's not unbox yet, because I got a Rihanna story. So we'll hold the unboxing for the Rihanna story. But let's get into the mess that we missed all week. So let's get to scrolling down, okay? So um, first of all, we're trying this Lovers and Friends tour again. Y'all remember last year, right before the parallelogram began, they announced this Lovers and Friends tour was coming, and it had all of... Our people. These are our people. Uh, Lauren Hill was going to be there late, probably. Uh, Usher, Ludacris, and Lil Jon, which we all know we're going to get our lives to that. Uh, TLC, Sierra, Nelly, Brandy, Monica, and a bunch of other people was listed for this tour. Then Miss COVID came and did what she had to do and put us in the house so we couldn't nobody go. Now they're trying it again this year for the upcoming year, 2022. And quiet as the step is looking like we might be back in the house again because Miss Delta is here now and she came to shut us down. I guess I better put that on a shirt too. Now Miss Delta came and shut us down. So um, I might be, I wasn't interested at first because I just don't feel like it's going to happen because one, it's a lot of people on this list. Like it's a lot, a lot of people. This is just a small, just a little snippet of the list. It's a lot. I would like to go though. It's in Vegas, so if I do decide to go, at least I know I, where I can stay at a, one of the properties that I um, am employed by, so I get a discount, you know, in the event that I do decide to go, so, I mean, it looks like it'll be a good show, but I just don't see it happening. I don't. I really don't, sadly. But in the event that it does, I would be excited to see Brandy and Monica together on stage, because I want to see Brandy, but Monica there is cute, too. It all belongs to me. Uh, ooh, uh, 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 me. All that song. So that's that. Uh, yeah, sure we can go. Yeah. All right. I'll allow it. So listen, Miss Black Widow is not playing with Disney, and she is going to turn the club up now, and I ain't even mad at her. So Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson, a.k.a. the Black Widow from Marvel, you know, uh, the Marvel movies, she is suing Disney. She is, she said, fuck this. I'm taking it straight to the top. I'm suing Disney ass off top. Here's what happened. So Black Widow came to Disney or, you know, when Marvel bought out or did Disney buy out somebody? Somebody bought out somebody. And so Disney acquired all the Marvel shit. So Black Widow came out and I guess it was released on Disney Plus and in theaters. So, apparently Scarlett Johansson's contract states, which she probably should have looked. Well, I mean, I'm sure she didn't know back then that Ms. Cole was going to shut us down and things of that nature. But I guess her contract says that a huge percentage of her earnings come from the movie's ratings or the movie tickets, like ticket sales in the actual theaters. And because it was on Disney+, Plus, you cut into her ends. So, she is suing Disney for $50 million in Disney. Listen... 
You owe her every penny of it. Run it. Y'all got it. That's dead ass wrong. Now, like I said, uh, Charlotte Johansson girl or Scarlett Johansson, you should have, uh, you and your people should have thought about this. Oh, my hands are freezing. Y'all people should have thought about this before you decide to, uh, sign these contracts and, you know, put a clause in there or something and say, I will be back ended or something. But honey, $50 million Disney, y'all gonna have to cough that up because y'all did wrong. This ain't even, this ain't even shit I can be like on the scale about. Pay this girl her money. She went and did her little tricks and flips and was shooting people and things of that nature down to the movies, all of the movies, because I think Black Widow is in like all of them. So she's an Avenger too, right? Y'all know I'm terrible at Marvel, the current Marvel films. I think she's an Avenger. Nonetheless, um, pay this woman what you owe her, Disney. The Mickey and them, pay this woman and we can just move on. Um, she's only asked for $50 million. I'm sure that's a, a dime in the bucket to uh, Disney. So, good luck, Scarlett Johansson. It's just a sad, sad situation. Girl, okay, here we go. So, sweetie, Salty. Do y'all know how long I went calling her Salty and y'all didn't stop me? I was so embarrassed when I found out her name was Sweetie. Nonetheless, so... McDonald's is doing this thing. I don't know if it's like I'm I'm about to call racist in a minute because I feel like y'all do this with the black people But then the, the little uh, Asian guys uh, big time rush No, BTS big time. Rush, that's BTR BTS what's the little BTS what's the little Asian boys? They had a meal at McDonald's too. So I guess it's not really a race thing Nonetheless, some tea is gonna have food at McDonald's like they give these little personalized meals like Travis Scott had one uh, the little Asian boys, like I said, and now Sawa T is going to have one too. Now, what the fuck this is going to tell, I don't know. Because Sawa T be on Instagram. I mean, sweetie, be on Instagram. <laughs> See how fat, how easily Sawa T rolls off my tongue? Uh, sweetie be on Instagram eating some nasty looking shit. Like, she be concoctioning and stuff. Like, just nasty. So, I don't know what this is going to tell, but I hardly eat McDonald's anyway. Unless I'm, like, having a craving for a chicken nugget with some honey. Oh, I feel in my spirit. Nonetheless, I don't know what I'm going to eat for dinner tonight as per usual. It's Thursday. What else is new? Um, but I guess, Sawa T, congratulations, I suppose. I'm not eating it. I'm not. Because, girl, you be on some bullshit. And uh, she even put in the caption, uh, what does it say? Who's ready for one of my infamous concoctions? Girl, do you not know infamous is not a good thing? But you go right ahead, nasty salty, and get your life. And y'all who are interested, it'll be down to the local McDonald's. Um, I'm sure it's coming soon. Yes, Mother Master, Lord Gaga is coming to a theater near you. I didn't know there was a House of Gucci movie coming out, but apparently there is. And it's starring Lady Gaga, which means I will be there. I love these House of, insert, famous Italian designer movies. Like, I told y'all how big of a fan of the House of Versace I was. That movie, or that little, uh, it wasn't a movie. It was on, um, what was it on? It was on movie. It was on Lifetime. Yeah, it was a Lifetime movie. I forget her name, but she played the fuck out of Donatella. Um, that was really good. I'm interested in seeing this, because I don't know much about Gucci, because I'm broke, and I don't pay for, like, shit like this. I just talked about this today. Funny how that story just rolled into this. I just talked about how I don't pay for clothes. Like, listen. I don't pay like high end money for clothes because they're, ex what's the word? Not expendable. Is it expendable? I think it's expendable. To me, they ain't gonna last long, nine times out of 10, and I just don't feel it necessary to spend a thousand dollars on a shirt. I'd be damned. So I'm interested because, like, y'all guys in it, y'all know I am a true diehard little monster, contrary to me changing my name on Twitter. But the number one fame monster can come back. He can. Oh, the days of the number one fame monster. We had fun on Twitter back in the day. Hey, Mary Boo, how are you? We had fun on Twitter back in the number one fame monster days when we were young and stan Twitter and didn't give a fuck and was dragging people for coming for Gaga and things of that nature. Oh, the time. What a time to be alive. Nonetheless, I didn't share the video. I didn't share the live. Whatever. We're in the middle of it now. I guess I can run up here and do it real quick. Here we go.
Y'all don't remind me. Oh, wait. Yes, I did. I did share it. I just remembered I did. Who, girl? My memory is shot. I'm hungry. Uh, we're going to save that story for later because we're going to talk about all of that. Oh, don't you worry. Don't you worry. The baby slash the closet will be talked about. Don't you worry. Um, but before that, for you girls who watched The Real Husbands of Hollywood, um, Kevin Hart little show that was on BET is coming back. I don't care. I'm sorry. I just don't. I didn't care for the show. Y'all know I don't care for Kevin Hart. And that's just that. Um, for you girls who are interested, it'll be coming back to BET. That little app that they have. Not actual BET, but like the little app that be on your TVs and things. So you can get into it with Nelly and uh, who's that? Boris Kojo and somebody else. Some other people. I think Nick Cannon was on there at one point. And Lord knows he ain't got much to do because apparently they blocking his TV show. Speaking of... Just a side story that I wasn't even going to talk about, but I was scrolling before the show because, you know, it's a whole pre-show party before we actually go live. I've been here jamming and reading. Apparently, Nick Cannon is having trouble booking um, anybody for his show because of his little um, comments that he made on that podcast that's still coming back to haunt him. This is really bugging me. Like, just give me a second. This is, like, irking my spirit that this camera... I don't know if it's the camera or is it me. Maybe I should move. But either way, it is cooking my spirit. And I, my soul has got to move. Better. Much better. Okay. Whew. Okay. Now that's over with. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Good luck, uh, boys in Hollywood and things of that nature. Like I said, I don't care. Um... We going back in the house. So listen, Vegas, here are the three states that I know have already said get your shit or cities that have already said get your ass back in the house or put your damn mask back on, vaccinated or not. Vegas, Atlanta, and Miami. Three main hot spots for people. And the people in Atlanta wasn't doing shit anyway. They ain't never been in the COVID because quiet as kept. They was running around like COVID wasn't a goddamn thing all during the whole parallelogram. But, according to the CDC, we might all be going back to masks because of Miss Delta, the strand or variant of Miss COVID. I guess it's her cousin. Nonetheless, I'm not interested. I don't want to go back in the house. I don't want to. I can't. I mean, I enjoyed the time we were here. Like, I got a lot done. We started the library live shop while we were in the house. You know, which was great and fun and still going by the way buy one get one bottles are still available so get on there um the library live shop um but i'm not i don't want to go back in the house i don't want to do it i don't but if i have to i will if i have to as long as y'all give me some unemployment give me that uh extra because i can't do nothing with you know, they don't give you like your full pay they give you like a portion of it and let's be clear, I can't do nothing with a portion of my pay. I need all of my coin dollars. Because I can't be like, Tammy, hey girl, I'm on employment. They shut us down again. So, good luck. We're going to be back in the house. I'm, I feel in my spirit. I don't know when. Oh, excuse me. But at least this time, hopefully, let it be like during the winter time. Like, put us in the house in like november december january when it starts snowing here in cleveland because i don't mind sending how excuse me i am in the middle of a show i didn't put my phone do not disturb i forgot um anyway so yeah that's that now let's talk rihanna speaking of rihanna is like fuck y'all and i don't give a damn i'm not doing shit but making these uh, coin dollars and things of that nature. Rihanna about to come out with a perfume. And I'm going to buy it. Hopefully it's a unisex thing. She'll probably make some for uh, like a unisex fragrance. I see Rihanna doing a unisex thing. So um, she ain't pounding no replays. She ain't thinking about how much we need no new music. I already said. If Rihanna keep cranking out products like these Fenty products. She ain't got to sing another note for the rest of her days. And I will be just fine. You want to know why? Because my skin going to be on fleek. And I'm going to be all right. And speaking of, I just got today. She just dropped off, actually. Like maybe an hour before the show. The new products. Oh, shit. I'm going to get the bottom. She now has a body scrub and a body butter. I'm sitting here ashy as hell 
for y'all because I'm gonna try the body butter right now. But the uh, scrub I have to try later. Recommended by um, Just Jared from the Everything and Then Some podcast. That's my receipt again. I always love the way these these things are packaged. Like it's like a um, promotional bo box, but it's not a promotional box. This is how stuff comes. So this is the Buff Rider um, exfoliating body scrub. Uh, this is six ounces. Oh shit! You know you gotta assemble her stuff. Take this off. Let me see what it's giving. I'm gonna just tell y'all what it smells like. Cause I'm not gonna try it right now. I can't be scrubbing on the job. Ooh! Rihanna, what's in it? It smells like an island. What's in here? Hold on, let me see what's in here. Ingredients, where are the ingredients? Ingredients, here we go. Sucrose, some G word. I smell the island. Is it some pineapple? It gotta be some pineapple in here somewhere. Fruit powder, whatever that is. Baby. Oh, I can't wait to scrub, scrub me down. This is the Buff Rider. Now, this is the body cream. Let's see what this is giving. Eh. Clean, smoothing. Now, she just came out with this stuff, so. Thank God it's a big jar, because I was looking at it. I was like, I hope they ain't the same size as your night mask. Because that little night mask that she got, that should be gone in like, oh. This don't have like a peel top? Okay, Rihanna, so it's just like open like this? Okay. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna take some. Oh, it's thick. Thick and luscious. Let's see. Ooh, wait a minute. Give me a little more, Rihanna. Ooh, all right. Okay, nice, nice coverage. I'm not all greasy, which is a bonus. It has a really neutral smell. It doesn't smell like much. I do smell SPF though. I smell that, so it must be SPF in here, which is a good thing for us uh, melanated people, if you will. I like this. It's not all like super shiny and like I'm not walking around looking like a. a Fresh out the grease chicken. I'm here for this, Rihanna. It has a really neutral. It smells like the hydro visor. Um, the moisturizer. It smells kind of like that. How much is this? I mean, what size is this? This is 6.7 ounces. Whipped oil body cream. Put this all on your body and go get you some bodies. Anywho, um, so that's that. Shout out to Rihanna and things of that nature. I can't wait to go get rubbed down and things of that nature. Damn. Uh, with my scrub. That scrub smells so good. It smells like a pina colada. She from the islands. It probably is a pina colada. You probably eat that, but I'm not going to try that. Anywho, moving on. Um, speaking of products and things of that nature, uh, keeping clean and things of that nature, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, you some nasty. Uh, let me not... Let me not do that because people parent differently and I ain't got no kids. So I'm not going to say what y'all need to do with y'all kids. However, for y'all grown asses, Ashton Kutcher went on the internet and said that him and his wife, Mila Kunis, um, only bathe their children when they see physical dirt on them. Now, I don't know what kind of dirt you see on your kids or what kind of kids you got. But you don't always see dirt on kids. Well, they white kids, so maybe you probably see dirt. You know, we black, so we take baths and showers frequently, actually. Or at least for the most part, most of us do. Um, but this is not a race thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying not to make it one, but this is the same people that say they don't wash their legs. So it might be a race thing. Um... The internet is dragging him and Mila down as they should. I just don't understand why you... So, you got to smell your kids before you... Like, literally smell them. Before you say, hey, go get your ass in the shower. Or, for that matter, why do you need to tell your kids to get in the shower? I take that back because I had a phase. I, but I'm a boy. Boys have phases like that where they don't want to get in the shower. At least I did. 
um, when I was younger, where I was just like, I don't want to take a bath, this, that, and third. So, even then, my mama still said, go get your ass in the bathtub, you stink, or even if you don't stink, I ain't seen you take no bath, go get in the bath, something like that. This is really awkward. I don't know if this is like a thing for the people, for those people, but um, go get you some of this uh, Rihanna's Buff Rider um, um, exfoliating body scrub. That's what y'all need for, for this life of sin. Because I just don't understand why you not washing your kids or your kids ain't washing their ass. Like, ain't no reason why I should smell you before I see you. That's a problem for me on this land. There ain't no kids running around this land, so that's just that. Um, <laughs> do we want to talk about it now or do we want to wait? I think we want to talk about it now. Let's talk about it now. All right. So here we go. Well, first, let's talk about Lil Nas X. We're going to talk Lil Nas X first. Then we'll segue into the baby. So Lil Nas X released his video for Industry Baby this week or over the week. And I tell you what. I am not like... I don't stand Lil Nas X. Like, I don't stand stand. I like him. I'm not like indifferent to him. I like most of his stuff. But this song... First of all, I hadn't heard the song until I saw the video. So, the video was my introduction to the song. I was hooked. I have never put any Lil Nas X song on repeat. But this one has been on repeat since I heard it. Not just the video, but the song too. It's good. The video shakes the table. He's in the prison house. He did a play on that whole Lil Nike thing, which apparently uh, has been settled for months now. And he was just doing like, of course, Lil Nas X being the marketing guru that he is. If him and Takashi got together and started like a marketing firm, baby, listen, they would make bank. But nonetheless, um, he did like a whole prison thing where he was locked up, given very much telephone by Lady Gaga. Um, the choreography, Sean Bankhead, Sean Bankhead has been working. Do you hear me? I remember when Sean used to do his class is down at the 411. Is it the 411 or 911? Down there in Atlanta. Nonetheless, shout out to Sean Bankhead because he's working up a black sweat. Okay? Getting all the coin dollars. I love the video. I love the video. I like the song. I'm getting my life and all those things. So, the baby. We're going to segue. That's why you see the baby and little boosty punk ass in this picture because we're about to talk about it. So, we done went down to the, uh, we're going to talk about Kelly Clarkson in a minute too because I told her to listen to me and now look at her paying this man all this money. Where are you at? He on here somewhere. Don't you worry. Where you at, the baby? The closet. There he is. All right. So the baby. Let's, let's get into it. So the Rolling Loud, which I don't know much about this festival, carnival, concert situation, but apparently I'm assuming it's like high people because it's called rolling loud loud code for weed rolling weed get it i got it so the baby was there and he was performing um i guess he found a, a decent performance um until he um did the following um don't you worry because i have a clip for you don't you worry i always have a clip so here is what the baby randomly had to say in the middle of his set on the rolling loud situation here we go don't you play no damn ads in the middle we don't do that not in this courtroom i don't want no ads there we go Okay, so for you all who missed it, let me just um, let me just say it again for you. Um, ladies, if your pussy smell like water, put a cell phone light in the air. Okay. No, let me make sure I do this in order. 
If you ain't come here with no HIV, STD, or any of them sexually transmitted diseases that make you die in two, three weeks, put a cell phone light on the air. Next, ladies, if your pussy smell like water, put a cell phone light in the air. Last but not least, fellas, if you ain't sucking a nigga dick in the parking lot, put a cell phone light in the air. And then your DJ comes behind you and cosigns and things of that nature. The internet is dragging the baby down, rightfully so. It has been a long time coming that the baby has been canceled. And I mean, he should have been canceled years ago. But he decided to go on this random tirade and this is what's gonna take it, what's gonna take the cake, I think. So my issue with the whole thing is, first of all, the timing of it all. Why in God's green earth or whoever's green earth that you subscribe to, would you feel it necessary to discuss HIV, STDs, um, apparently gay men having sex in the parking lot and uh, water smelling pussy in the middle of your set? I just don't understand the timing of it all, but sir, it's very much giving um, the closet. Funky Dineva caught, Funky Dineva made a post, and when I tell you, I screamed bloody murder. He said the baby new name is the closet. I screamed. I was at work when he said it. I mean, I hollered. I could not contain myself. I was like, not the closet, the fucking closet. And that's what, from this point on, and I used to call him the barracuda because I just feel like the baby looked like a barracuda. You know that fish, the fish with the real big mouth? He looked like a barracuda. So I used to call him the barracuda, but now the closet is even more funnier. So I think I'm just gonna go with that. Sir, listen, let me just fire off real quickly because you're not the only one who gonna get some smoke tonight because you gonna get some, T.I. gonna get some, Boosie gonna get some, and then black people in general are going to get some. Thanks, Dear Bear. Um, the baby, let's not, and I don't know why, okay, in this video here, I'm not gonna play it, but I'm just gonna tell you, he called himself um, justifying what he said in this video, stating how, first of all, he was a, uh, he's a live performer. It, he called himself the best performer, the best rapper or best performer at the Rolling Loud situation. He called himself the best. I Listen, I don't subscribe to rap much. I subscribe to rap enough to know that our rap for me is a lot better than I cannot name a the baby song. And that's just because it's not my thing. But normally because this here is my thing, if you got a song and it pop pop, I at least know the name of it. I can't say, I, I know you got that song with Megan that you decide to, uh, we're not even going to discuss you bringing out Tory Lanez because he needs to be shot down since he's shooting people. But that's a whole nother story. Um, my issue with the baby is the following. And my issue with most of these rappers are the following. You popcorn rappers who do these songs and you pop real, you know, real fast. You get out here and you really think you got the big head. And or you get the big head and it's just you're not that guy in the community we say you're just not that girl you're not that girl I'm sorry is the baby in your for my people who listen to rap and things of that nature is the baby in your top five top ten ah you've been reaching give him top ten is he in your top ten I'm pretty sure unanimously everybody's gonna say no i mean top 10 of all time not just of now of all time hell i don't even have a top 10 and i could sit here and name 10 rappers that i could um at any given time hit my spotify and turn the rap playlist on and i can rap every word so the baby i just need for you to um I just need for you to go away. They didn't start canceling all his shit. He didn't got canceled from some festival over there in the UK. Elton John got that done because you know Elton John runs over there. 
over there in uh, the UK with the, the biscuits and the tea and the crumpets and shit. That's where Elton John, um, he runs all of that. So they canceled your ass from that. You had some little um, some little deal with some clothing, some urban clothing line. They cut that shit out because they ain't fucking with you. Dua Lipa then got on it. You know Dua Lipa, my girl. I love her. She then got on the internet and said, fuck you and your whistle. Um, and another thing. Why are we talking about Dua Lipa? I don't desire... Do I want to say that? Yep. I don't care for Dua Lipa to take down the song with him on like streaming platforms. I don't care. I don't. I just feel like she already made her statement and said how she feels about it. Taking down the song is going to do what? I mean, I'm sure it'll affect his pocket somehow, but like that's not what I really desire. I cared that Dua Lipa spoke up and said, "We ain't with the fuck shit. This stuff really got my hands feeling good." Rihanna girl, I'm gonna have to call you back. Anyway, um, I just don't. I feel like she did enough. Like she did more than most of these. Cause quiet's kept. You ain't seen none of the blacks say nothing. And we gonna talk about that in a minute. So um, let's jump to Ti. So Ti decided to get on as he always does. Hey, Chloe. Tia, oh, wait, I got a long comment. Y'all know I love a comment. I heard her restraining order against Tori is still in place, and so you know that means he violated by being there in the first place. Go to jail! Go directly to jail where you belong, you shooting people, bitch, with your bald-headed ass. You know what? If you going bald, just let it go. Just let it go. Elsa, let it go. We know about your hair plugs, Tory Lanez. We know all about them. Just let it go. But that's neither here nor there. Um, sorry, we were talking about T.I. So T.I. decided to put in his two cents, as he always does. Him and them fucking 14-syllable-ass words that he be pulling out of his word-of-a-day calendar that he got from Office Max. You know, it just cooks me that people go and get them a word-of-a-day calendar and then for all of a sudden feel like they are a scholar. T.I., shut the fuck up. Ain't nobody asked you. And one of his things, this whole everybody's entitled to their opinion thing, Got most of y'all really fucked up. Because yes, while everybody's entitled to their opinion, clearly I'm sitting here opinionated as fuck. But that don't mean you got the right to state your fucking opinion. You got the right to have a bitch, but that don't mean you got the right to state the shit. And that's just that. Tiana went on here and got in. He called I am Zoe. Now, I love Zoe. I like Zoe. I feel like he's funny. But I don't know why you decide to say Zoe would be the spokesperson for the LGBTQ or SCUV PIADA community. But I just would like to speak on behalf of the LGBTQ or STUV PIADA community and say he is not the person you want to call if you want to bridge a gap between heterosexual rappers and the LGBTQ or STUV PIADA community. Zoe is not the person you call. Because Zoda made some sketchy ass statements in the past too that made us look at him like, okay, is this your king? Like, not Zo. That's just that. Now let's talk about the other fool. Oh, the raccoon eyed ass Boosie. Here you go, inserting yourself in all the gay shit. I didn't tell, have I told y'all my opinion on Boosie? I don't think I have. I think I did on YouTube. But it wasn't here. Listen. Here's my theory, and I'm very rarely wrong when it comes to this kind of shit. Here's what I think is Lil Boosie's issue. Lil Boosie had one of two things happen to him. One, Lil Boosie had a traumatic experience as a child, and now as an adult, he is very vocal about traumatic being um, something involving the LGBTQ or maybe a sexual assault, something of that nature that makes him feel it necessary to insert himself into gay business. I don't understand the concept, but that's one of the theories I have. Theory number two is that not only did you see the man riding the dick in the jail cell, but you may or may not have experienced some gay experience in the jailhouse with you and another inmate. That's just how I feel. That is how I feel. As previously said, I am very rarely wrong. And 
<laughs> that's just what I feel is going on in Boosie's life. And he is suppressing all of those things and being all aggressive and things of that nature. Sir, you're one of the girls. You're one of the girls, Boosie. You are. And that's why you running around here trying to uh, pretend like you're not and being super aggressive towards the LGBTQ community when at the end of the day, we well, ain't bother nobody. Nobody. This was unsolicited anger from you, that damn T.I. and his thesaurus, the fucking the closet, and all the other... Wait, what happened? He had picked me again. I don't like that for him. It's sad. <laughs> Gather him. It's annoying. All of y'all are annoying. And then for T.I. to bring Lil Nas X into it, and it was just like random. Like, it didn't even fit into the conversation that we were having. Why the fuck are you mentioning Lil Nas X? He over there somewhere minding his business. Let's just call a thing a thing. And I said this on Twitter. You pussy assholes. You rappers. Y'all hard thuggish, thuggish ruggish rappers. Are very much bothered that there is a young, gay as fuck, spicy, I mean spicy habanero ghost pepper spicy gay ass black male running circles around y'all asses you couldn't sell the way Lil Nas X sells on your best day and that bothers the dog fuck out of y'all black people listen cause now I'm about to fire off on the blacks cause I'm sick of y'all shit too not, not like the ones that are like cause most, if you watching right now we probably think alike or at least similarly so, not y'all, but y'all other black people. Y'all other black people who, for whatever reason, feel it necessary to protect people like Lil Boosie and T.I. and The Closet and R. Kelly and all them other motherfuckers who are trash ass men. You are the problem with not only the black community, but the fucking world. But y'all will cancel a black woman in a heartbeat. But y'all won't cancel the motherfuckers that need to be canceled. It's a problem. It's upsetting me and my homegirls. And that's just how I feel about it. Now, that I've gotten all that off of my chest, I can move on. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Now, let's move on. Uh, so, this is the room Kanye West is sleeping in. Now, I asked y'all last week where he was staying. I, oh, no, I was um, in the Everything and Then Some podcast comments. You know, I'm the king of comments. So I was in the comments and things of that nature. And I was like, where the fuck is he sleeping at? Um, this is where he's sleeping at. This is a jail cell. So you know he's finishing his new album, Donda, um, named after his late mom. Um, oh. <laughs> You can have a yellow fax or fax as well. Hit up the Everything and Then Some podcast and they will um, they'll um, get it out to you. Um, this is where he's at. That's like a cot on the floor. He got a little closet over there. The orange shoes are cute. But this is where he's sleeping. You couldn't like, you couldn't bring your bed or like a little luxury to it. I mean, this looks like prison. But I mean, listen, I'm trusting the process because you know one thing I always say is after a divorce, after a divorce, a funeral, or it was something else. Something else. Divorce, funeral, or something else. The next album is always going to be fire. So I'm going to listen to this new album when it come out. Whenever it come out. I think they said August 6th. I think August 6th. Um, good luck, Kanye. I'm here for it. Uh, <sighs> Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson now joins the ranks of Mary J. Blige, Sherry Shepard, Wendy Williams, the women who are now going to be paying for a nigga's lifestyle. Because I told her, I told Kelly Clarkson to listen to me. And what she do, she ain't listen to me. So now she's going to be paying her husband 200 k a month in spousal support and child support for the rest of them kids' lives and probably the rest of his. I hate to see it. I hate to see it. I really hate to see it because I love me some Kelly Clarkson. 
I was about to sing a song, but I don't, I just got a little dry. So I was like, nope, let me not do it. Um, I just find it so upsetting that y'all women keep prenups, prenups. <clears throat> Who dying? Oh yeah, parent dying. Thanks, dear. Um, prenup, prenup, prenups. Everybody, we just talked about Kanye West. We want prenups. We want prenups. Yeah, something that you need to have because when she leave your ass, she gonna leave with half. And in this case, when he leave your ass, he gonna leave with half. So Kelly is unfortunate. We, you just got that spot on a new show. See, I can spit Kanye West bars. I can't spit no the baby bars. Punk ass bitch. Anywho. <laughs> Good luck, Kelly. Um, Paris Hilton is allegedly pregnant. Uh, that's cute. T, I can kiss my ass. Si uh, Simone. Shout out to Simone. I stand with Simone. She done quit the, uh, I almost said the Oscars. She done quit the Olympics and said she going home to get her a mental health on. And that's on period. And I'm totally with it. Shout out to Simone. You got my support with your magical ass. I love to see her flipping and twirling and shit of that nature. I just love it. Shout out to Simone. Just black girl magic. All dusted. Just pixie dust all over her. I stand, Simone. Now move on. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. We already talked about his bitch ass. Tabitha Brown seasoning. Here we go. Because I somebody else I can cuss the fuck out. Pat Houston. Now, Pat, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you, bitch. Pat Houston, I've been sick of you for years. But now I'm really sick of you. Now, Whitney Houston, because you know Pat Houston runs Whitney Houston Estate. She is going to have a Vegas residency starting as early as October. That's in like two months. July, August, September, October. Like, yeah, two, because July is damn near over. So, yeah, two months. Pat, use a dirty snake. Use a snake in the grass. Matter of fact, you ain't even in the grass no more. I don't want to see a hologram Whitney Houston. I don't. I missed my chance to see Whitney live. I'm going to watch Cinderella. And I'm going to listen to all the albums. But I do not want to see a hologram. I don't want to see a hologram nobody. Quiet as kept. Because it's creepy. I know you going on the glory. So me seeing you up on the stage doing the My Name Is Not Susan dance is going to scare me. I don't want no parts. And because I know Pat Houston, old money hungry ass, is just grasping for straws at this point, I want her out. I want her out of the estate. Where the fuck is Sissy? Is Sissy still alive? I think Sissy is still alive. Somebody get Sissy on the line and tell her that Pat is over there running a the fucking muck. Why isn't Sissy in charge of the estate? What is she doing with her life? Where the fuck is Aretha? She gone. She is gone for sure. I know that much. The moment I wake up, Dion Warwick, she over there on Twitter, tweeting her ass off. Why Dion Warwick ain't said shit yet? Cause she too busy on Twitter talking to the damn millennials. Y'all need to get Pat Houston ass in in order. Cause I'm sick of her, and I like I said I've been sick of her with them Lifetime movies, the 27 biopics, the 39 books. Like I'm I'm over it. I know everything I need to know about Whitney Houston. I'm exhausted. I want to run to you. I love that song. I uh, don't care to talk about it. Don't care to talk about it. Don't care to talk about it. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, Kappa Alpha Phi. Kappa Alpha Psi. Is it Psi or Phi? Whatever. Kappa Alpha. Them boys that be doing the steps and stuff. Ooh, ooh, all them. Um, brother opens up a wellness studio in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Shout out to him. Okay. R. Kelly. I guess I should have mentioned him when I was cussing people out. Um, so, there are new accusations against R. Kelly. Nasty ass. Now it's a little boy involved. Now it's a little boy involved. Um... We heard this story years ago. I don't know if y'all heard it, but I heard it because y'all know I've been doing this for a while. Um, <laughs> um, I heard this story maybe five to seven years ago about this little boy. And now it's finally coming out, out to the light. 
Um, so apparently and allegedly, boy was 17 years old. Um, R. Kelly met him at a hot Donald's, a McDonald's, um, solicited him and a friend of his to have sex. The friend was, I believe, married or dating a woman. Um, he recorded both of them having sex, recorded sexual encounters with both of the boys and things of that nature. And now it's all coming to light because he's in jail now. But we not going to cancel him. We can't. Y'all can't let R. Kelly go for whatever reason. Y'all cannot let R. Kelly go. I never cared for R. Kelly's music in the first place. So when, like, it's nothing for me to cancel R. Kelly. Because I never cared for his music game. What's it? That album that y'all swear about. Foreplay. Is it Foreplay? The CD, the album cover, my parents had the CD. I, I don't want to talk about it. Um, it was a white CD. He ain't had no shirt on. I think he had on leather pants. And it was, I think it was Foreplay. Something like that. I'm not listening to foreplay. I'm not stepping in the name of love. I just never really care for it. So, let him go. And you ain't never getting out of jail. Period. So, quit asking. Wasting our damn tax dollars. Um, I don't care to talk about it. Ooh, did y'all hear this news? I'm excited. It's called 12 Play. Ooh, shit. <laughs> Girl, I was eight plays off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told y'all I'm not a fan. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is it 12 plays? It's supposed to be four plays. I'm not even asking. Nonetheless, he got to go. <laughs> Dirty bitch. Uh, <laughs> 12 play. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry because I don't care, but... Thank you guys for the correction. <laughs> Who's well play? Okay. I done got high. Listen, um, so the Surreal Life is coming back. I don't know about y'all and how y'all felt about the Surreal Life when it used to come on VH1, but I love this show. And the fact that Tamar might be on it, even though Tamar kind of like put me together on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. I forgave you, Tamar. And I hope you forgave me too because I was in my feelings and I took it. I, I apologize. Um... Tamar is going to be on it. Diz Rama and that's uh, Frankie Muniz. It's Frankie Muniz, right? From, uh, what was the show back in the day? With the boy in the middle. Oh, what was the name of that show? I forget, but nonetheless, he all, the two people that's going to be on the show, August Alcina is going to be there too, which I don't really care to see. Um, but I'm so excited for this. I remember... When the brat was on Surreal Life, that was a good season. Uh, oh, what was her name? Flavor Flav and uh, Foofy Foofy. She going on the glory now. Bridget Nielsen, that was a good season. I'm excited about this. I am excited about this. Yep, Malcolm in the Middle, that's it. So, all this is coming back. I don't know when, but I'm excited about it. Get into it. I'm not talking about no monkey pox or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, oh, shit. July 21st. July 21st. Are we back? I think that's it. Yeah, because July 21st was a week ago. We talked about all this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I said the show this week was going to be like an hour long and we 52 minutes in. Listen. You know Foofy Foofy. That's what Bridget Nielsen used to call Flavor Flav. She used to call him Foofy Foofy. Nicki Minaj got a verse on uh, Gucci Gucci, Gucci Gucci, Prada Prada. I forget the song. But uh, you know I got that flavor. Call me Foofy Foofy. You see I can spit a Nicki Minaj bar. I can't spit at the baby bar. I'm just putting that out there again. So that's that. <laughs> Listen, um, I love you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in this week. Apparently I ain't got shit else. No more stories to get into. If you haven't already, getting over to the Library Live shop. The BOGO sale is still going on. I literally have like maybe four more BOGOs left. So you better BOGO your life before they all gone because I don't think I'm restocking the bottles because something new is coming soon. Something is missing. That's a brandy verse. Um, for your facts or facts shirts, head over to the Everything and Then Some podcast DMs. They will be happy to uh, get your Everything and Then Some um, merch and go be great. Just look at my post for the go be great because I'm not getting up to go get this shirt. Because Natalie got on and she over there under the air conditioner getting her life. So that's that. 
Um, I love you guys for watching. We will see you guys next Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. I'm not missing another week because I'm not going nowhere else. Yes, I am. Damn, I'm always traveling. You know, I love you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. You know I got that flavor. Call me Foofy Foofy.